OK. Well, here we go with the final stages. Um, as I say, I'm in my garden studio. It's very hot outside. Um, hottest day of the year so far. I'm going to do the third stage, which probably will be the final stage. And um, first thing I'm going to do is get some shadow work onto the building. Um, good clean washes of the art to any watercolour painting. I'm going to use ultramarine and olives and crimson. They're the two colours I'm going to use for this particular shadow work. I'm going to use more blue in the mix for the building and a little more red in the mix for for the um, for most other areas. Okay, right. Now the first place I'm going is the back of the building there like that. Very dark, that's how dark that is. Uneven where we make the ground. There is also a casting shadow from that that runs down, drops in and slopes like that and then comes halfway across the roof area. Um, sorry, the window area. There we go, so that's that. There's also this area here. Those windows, just paint over, they shine through at the end. That's good. Okay. Um, another area here, the back of the building. Goes straight down across. That's that. The windows would be complete shadow. The ones facing there and there. That's it. No need to make things too fussy on that front. Okay, now for the actual um, sloping or the, the half round roof, I'm going to damp an area there. Alright. Then I'm going to paint into that with this shadow colour. Like that, that, and like that. All of a sudden, that roof is in shadow. Just got to lift off a little area there that shouldn't have been painted. So lift that off. Because that's the front of that roof. There we are. See how they shine out? against the um, the top of the roof that's not in complete um, shadow but it's not in full sunlight so it's um, you know, it's one of those areas that are very interesting to paint um, but you get that lovely glow of light uh, along that bottom edge like that right now we're looking at this area here that domed roof there, up like that, and there again, top of that is probably slightly lighter. There we go. We're now looking at the, this comes around a little bit more, now we're looking at the window frames, but not the complete windows clearly the window frames plus a shadow that runs down onto the roof we can allow that to be soft and subtle um, there is an overhang it's got to be a little bit darker now nice to have a little bit of strength on the underside of there so that shows where the lip of the roof overhangs and a little bit there and a wide area there just shows you where shows you the angle of the sun that's where that area uh, protrudes the windows are recessed 
so they will have across the top down the right hand side immediately they look as if they've been recessed the porch area will be recessed there so there's a bit of an overhang and we'll call the doorway slightly recessed as well so it looks as if the door sits back which it probably does um, we do have a bit of shadow where the figures are that's it that's pretty good um, one or two touches to be done to that shortly but in the meantime I'm looking at a shadow from the underside of that area there and quite often these buildings can be in half shadow from a cloud so I'm softening one area and I'm painting at this dark blue purpley blue into the left hand side of the chimney and up into that damp area and that will make that completely look just as if there's a cloud shadow that's just catching the top of that area, the roof. So it's gone really dark, sits that right back. We will have some shadow on a couple of areas there. These are just hints that tell us that there's a third dimension there's something behind those foreground bushes and we can even balance that with a touch of similar sort of um, treatment here really where there is just some little touches of shadow that help to elongate the um, they could give shadow on the beach I suppose if they're close enough so that's always interesting to put in. Good. Now the next area will be the beach. Now I'm going to add a bit of yellow to that to turn it slightly green um, because that to me is possibly that warm green grey. That's what we're looking for. So raw sienna, plenty of water and there again this would be a cloud shadow so I'm dampening the paper at the appropriate area so that when I swoop the colour in it softens up into that damp area there you go now I'm adding a little drop of blue into that just to give it a bit of atmosphere See the way that, that blue sits in, you've got a little bit of um, bit of red there, a little bit of shingle feel, you have to overwork it, just roll the brush across the paper. And it's also a little bit damp there. A little more blue now and a uh, touch more water for this lovely cloud shadow that goes into that area that I had there. It's gone dry. I said it is very very warm so I'll soften that just with a doesn't matter if it's quite hard edged really that's it and that's looking good it's great if we're going to get shape and form and then we come to the water well that's pretty simple really um, we probably wouldn't see the building but I'm going to put in I mean yeah, we probably would. We'd see the top of the dome, perhaps, and that's the measurement we, we usually use. Where it sits, if it were to sit on the edge of the water, you'd see the complete building. But because it sits back, we only see the top half of the dome, and we would see a touch of the tower at the top. And all I'm going to do for that, simple treatment for water, um, I'm going to use raw sienna with the cobalt blue, sorry, with the um, ultramarine. That will give us a nice dull green grey. And that is what you need really. And I'm going to paint in the boats first, 
just to give me an idea of colour. There you go. So the boats are... And if the water is quite... Um, got a lot of movement in the water, then the there's a, a lot of movement in the shadow. Which is there, like that. Plenty of movement in the shadow. And then the, notice the masts come away at the same angle, same angle, the opposite angle to the masts themselves. Um, I'm going to add a little more blue to this because this is the, the blue from the uh, building. And this is all I'm going to do. Just simple treatment like that. We then see that tower possibly. And just a little bit of something else going on there. Okay, and that, you know, it's quite, quite, uh, just deepen that a tad. Um, just before it dries, just to give it a secondary tone. And then we'll go back in and put some shadow onto the boats. Same purpley blue shadow that we had before. And we paint under and round. Under and round. And then, just getting, because they lay to one side, just dampening where they touch. So you get a soft edge. But other than that, um, probably all you need for the boats. Going to put some touches of shadow on the left hand side, perhaps the figures and the white sail to this one that they've taken down. Like that. There we go. Uh, just simple treatment really of that. Um, will be some quite deep touches of colour along the water line here and there. That's it. I've decided to keep the water fairly light. I will introduce a touch of um, shading to the water as we run out of picture. Purely either side, purely because we have that um, cloud in the sky, so it's always nice to um, to add a touch of and add some water to that clear water. And just drag that across. It just tells us that there's movement in the water. Um, it's always nice to have a little bit of movement in water. Um, makes it so much easier to depict it really. And one or two little ripples just to take away the plain feel from that. Um, but that's pretty much it, you know. And finally, we need the rigger to really, you'll notice how the rigger, with the use of dark colour, will bring everything together. Now I'm going to use burnt umber. It's my favourite mix for nipping in final colours. Uh, or lining or whatever. It's dark brown, so it's warm. Not too much blue. Not too dark. Put a bit of red with that just to give it a bit of strength. And we will have uh, just a... No, too much on the brush. Hang on a moment. There we go. The underside of there. The underside of there and that really does show up the intensity the window there the intensity of light there we go that really that just gives it that extra punch that you probably you know some of 